What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to do with you guys. This is the off the grid knives or off grid knives, I, I, I can't remember, uh, Black Mamba. I had never heard of them and uh, Mr. Shaker MT 1970 on Instagram, give this man a follow, sent this with uh, a whole bunch of other knives for me to take a look at and I think... Uh, I mean, he uh, he understands, you know, kind of what I like to go after and taste and things like that. So I can understand why he sent this. Very interesting. I just want to give you guys some information on the company. So I, I looked them up and uh, they have a warehouse in Austin, Texas. And there's plenty of information on their site. Um, but uh, their, their knives are manufactured in China um, using the same. The inf I don't know exactly who the OEM is on this. But it said the same high-end OEMs that everybody's been using. So it's, you know, I don't think it's Riot, but we or Best Deck, you know, likely one of those two. If somebody could offer some uh, clarification on that, I would be infinitely grateful. And I will pin it down in the comments section. Uh, what we have here is M390, 6AL4V titanium and ceramic bearings. Um, I can tell you that the quality feels very indicative of uh, we knives or best deck knives uh, so I have no you know if it's not them it's somebody with very similar quality and I, I don't have a concern with that um, real quick if you are new to my channel or you've been around for a long time either way I do have patreon so if you'd like to get your hands on one of these cool stickers and at the same time support my channel uh, you can find a link down in the description where you can take a look around and then if you want to support me that would be great uh, That would mean the world to me You'll gain access to my once a week patreon exclusive content for any tier even the one dollar tier a lot of people ask me I don't want to sign up for like a monthly thing. Can I just make a one-time donation? Yeah, you totally can. In fact, if you follow the link down in the description uh, and just scroll down in the information, there at the bottom, I actually have this area where I talk about how to do that. It's very easy. Uh, anybody who signs up right now will get a shout out. Uh, so you want me to plug Instagram, YouTube, that's perfectly fine. Um, and then also I have a uh, really cool knife to give away the moment I hit 90 patrons, not just for patrons, literally for everybody. So if you want to be a part of that, follow that link. Anyways, let's go ahead and get a measurement on this little big guy. Overall length of the Black Mamba coming in at just a little over 7 inches, like 7.15, 7.2, something like that. Tip to scale on the blade, you're looking at 3 inches. It is a little bit over 3 inches, unfortunately, uh, pretty uncontroversially there. And then your cutting edge is about 2.8, yeah, about 2.8 inches there on the cutting edge. Let's go ahead and do... Some size comparisons here up against the Ontario Rat Model 1. Rat 1 is coming in at 8.6 inches overall, so you can see the Rat 1 is a little bit bigger. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? Spyderco PM2 coming in at 8.3 inches overall. How about up against the Benchman Griptilian, or in this case the Ritter Hogue? Ritter Hogue coming in at 8 inches overall. And last but not least, the Spyderco Para 3. Spyderco Para 3 coming in at 7.25 inches overall. So there you go. That is the most like, I mean, of all the knives that I use to compare, um, that's the one that it's closest to. It's almost exactly the same length overall. It has a little bit more of a uh, cutting edge. Um, so like I said, what we're working with here is titanium that's been sort of, it's like DLC coated and then tumbled. Um, really cool looking. Um, this isn't always my go-to finish here. I just realized, did I start the video with the blade out? I did, didn't I? I usually give you guys the satisfactory deployment there in the beginning. <laughs> oh, well. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, it's got this really cool um, DLC coating and then some tumbling on there. So that's really nice. I believe that Shaker has been using this uh, ever so lightly. You can see there's a couple of use marks there, but that's fine. I think these black DLC coatings that have been tumbled, these black wash coatings do a good job of hiding wear. I am a huge fan of this. It looks like golf ball texturing on the titanium. You guys know I love textured titanium, a uniform pattern. Big fan of that, that's really, really cool. No idea how the M390 on this blade is heat treated, but M M390 is one of the very best compositions out there for an EDC knife, so I'm very happy with that. Um, we are, let me get my flashlight. See on the inside, we are not looking at milled titanium. I don't always have a problem with that. You know, a lot of people are like, ah, that makes it so heavy. I kind of like a solid feeling uh, titanium knife. I know a lot of people don't. I went out of my way to keep my solid titanium scale for my XM18 because all of the new titanium scales coming out are milled. 
and I wanted that solid feeling, right? Not everybody's like me. Let's go ahead and get a weight on this guy. Uh, first, before we do weight, give you a um, measurement of blade thickness. Actually, um, we, what we should do is compare it up against the uh, Para 3 and PM2 here real quick. So blade thickness on this guy, I'm gonna make a guess. It's between 145 and 150 thousandths. Could be thicker though. It is. Let's redo it just to make sure. Boy, that's a thick, no, okay. So see, and now I'm getting a variance in thick. Let me make sure that I'm grabbing it on the right spot. Okay, so yeah, 145,000. So I was gonna say, it looks like about what a PM2 is, right? Yeah, 145,000, that makes sense to me. Carry profile, it is a little bit of a chunk and that flipper tab does poke up quite a bit. Um, gosh, it almost disappears in the background. <laughs> Uh, up against the uh, Spyderco PM2 and Para 3, you can see there, carry a profile, and it's mostly in the chunkiness and the flipper tab that might cause an issue for some people, but it's not, it's, it's right here in the same area of these two knives. In terms of thickness, go butt to butt here, you can see that the Black Mamba is a little bit thicker, but out to the pocket clip, we're really looking at about the same height and room taken up in your pocket. It's more so going to be the weight of this guy that people are gonna notice. In terms of carry profile, it's right, it's right there, right in the sort of medium high end of what people are used to carrying comfortably. Four point, it's really not that bad. I mean, it's a small knife at four and a half ounces, right? That's gonna be too heavy for some people. Um, four and a half ounces is four and a half ounces. It's got an okay carry profile with really the biggest thing sticking out is the flipper tab, not that big of a deal. Definitely not a knife that I would carry in athletic shorts or very thin material pants. Uh, you got some heavy duty work pants, you got regular khakis, regular jeans, cargo shorts, whatever. Yeah, you're good. No problem there, you're not gonna have an issue with that. So how's the action on this guy? Um, that's what I what I say when I say, uh, or what I mean when I say it feels like we are best deck, right? It takes a tiny little bit of encouragement to get it to close, but it feels very smooth. There's no friction. I'm not feeling any friction in here. Yeah, there's no friction. It's just tightness of the pivot, which could probably be loosened to achieve a false shut action if I wanted to. Um, but I like to kind of give it as an example, you know, how it came in. Um, detent is fantastic. It's perfectly tuned. Nice clickiness. No detent lash. The flipper tab is, I mean, you can definitely light switch it. If you go to push button it, it's really pointy, right? You can see here, it's not super pointy, but it's not the most comfortable thing in the world. And you do have this unfortunate landing zone here that is very similar to a Rick Hinder XM18. A lot of people talk about that. So Fidget Factory is good. It's not quite as bad. In fact, I'll actually compare it up against the, the one that takes the cake for the complaints. Um, here's an example of a very uncomfortable landing zone on an XM18. This isn't quite so bad. Um, but the flipper tab, in my opinion, is actually a little bit uh, less comfortable than the XM18. So it's not the worst thing in the world, but if you like to sit around and flip your knives on the couch all the time, you're gonna get a little tired here. This area right here, plenty of room to disengage. Uh, the flipper tab catches your thumb and there is no double clutch. It's very easy to do that over and over and over again. Um, so for the blade shape, we have a uh, worn cliff with some cool, how they do the jimping up here. At first I thought, okay, well the top of it's smooth, so is it actually gonna catch my finger? Yeah, it actually does, and you know what? It's pretty comfortable. Um, whether you're working with your bare hands or you're working with gloves, you're gonna catch that. But the nice thing is it extends way out, so you still have traction clear up here on the blade. I like that. Um, nice thickness carried out to the tip. I think this is gonna be a stronger worn cliff design than you generally see out there. It does come down to a decent cutting edge. It's not gonna be an absolute laser beam, but for your general EDC cutting tasks, it's gonna be just fine. The edge is well done. Um, it's definitely going to cut and M390 is going to accentuate that for this uh, geometry. Moving down to the, actually let's talk about the logo. The logo is cool, it's very simple. It stands out because it's white in contrast to the black background. Then they have M390, excuse me, I bumped my phone. Uh, M390 on the other side right there. I like that, that's very simple, it's very nice. Moving down to the scales, we have nicely chamfered titanium scales, no hot spots other than the flipper tab right here, and it's a lot of it is the jimping on the underside of it, right? And that's so that, I guess you gain traction back here. I don't think it needs it because the, it's curved, so your, your finger's gonna find it. Doesn't need the, <laughs> doesn't need it. It's gonna create an issue, definitely, 
during use if you're running your finger up again. It, that will really bite into your finger. It's not the worst thing I've ever experienced, but to anybody considering this knife, that flipper tab is very prominent, right? Um, so bear that in mind. Uh, let's go ahead and check the hardware size, get out my handy dandy Wea bit selector and quarter inch magnetic driver. Two items that I can't recommend enough to my viewers. These are super inexpensive and I use them literally every single day. Uh, perfect for disassembling your knives or keeping maintenance up. Links down in the description as well as links for some of the awesome high-end production knives I show on the channel every day as well as a lot of the budget knives I show on the channel every day. A lot more than just the Spyderco knives and the wrap knives. If you've never looked down in my description, look down there. I was very particular about which knives I put down there. Some of my personal favorites and some of the most popular stuff uh, of the last decade. So take a look. Whatever your itch is, you're sure to be able to scratch it down there in the description. Anyways, um, I'm going to guess that the pivot is a T8. So what we have here is a T8. Just stick it in there. Well, you know, what's so great about the Stevie driver? It, it's easy to hang on to. A little tiny thin driver, I hate that because I can't get traction on it. And this guy, I definitely can. Um, that's definitely a T8. And, ooh, I didn't look. Is that T8? Yes, <laughs> T8. Thank you. Let's do this. Let's always just do this. When you're making a knife, you're... I, there's, there's so many, like, new makers out there. If you're making a knife... T8 pivot, T8 body screws. It's so easy. You know, or if you got to go up, I mean, like, keep them uniform. If you go T10 pivot, do T10 screws. Just whatever you do, don't do T6. T6 sucks. I've never seen a T6 pivot, but I my brain would explode if I saw a T6 pivot. Um, anyways, really, really like that. Uh, it's very simple backspacer, um, very smooth. I always talk about, you know, I like just two screws. Look where this other screw is interesting it wraps all the way back around this has a large handle uh to blade like the blade to handle ratio is odd there's a lot more handle than blade but i can get a full grip on it i'm sure a lot of you are wondering oh you know it's the same length as, as the pair of three the only reason you can get a full grip on the pair of three is because there's a forward choil uh -uh, they actually just made the handle a lot bigger on this guy some people don't like that aesthetically i don't mind it i'm happy with a more compact knife that I can get my hand all the way around, right? So that's why, you know, you've got that screw here and those backspacer wraps all the way around. They could shorten this up, right? They could shorten the handle up and just do two screws up here and have the backspacer come to like right here. But then I wouldn't be able to get a full purchase on it. Now it depends on the size of your hand. Some people are gonna appreciate that and some people aren't. I do, I don't have a problem with it. I'm sure that nobody noticed the blade to handle ratio until just now, or, you know, I'm sure some people did and everybody will say that they did, but, um, I didn't notice it until I looked at where the screws positions were for the backspacer. So anyways, I don't have an issue with that. I'm happy with how they designed it. Moving over to the other side, I'm not the biggest fan in the world of the, um, pocket clip. The pocket clip kind, pocket clip kind of seems like an afterthought to me. It's kind of just your run-of-the-mill pocket clip. And I imagine, I think it's bent over a little bit, probably because Shaker caught, caught uh, some, you know, caught it on something. And that's because it's got a build design and I don't like those. They do get caught on things. You guys hear me talk all the time. I like uh, ones like this that sort of curve down into that spoon shape and they don't stick up quite as much. You wouldn't think that that, that would make that much of a difference, but it does. Now, in terms of how it actually carries though, yeah, it's actually super easy to get in and out of the pocket. It's a very functional pocket clip. That bill, though, I, I do notice it a little. It's running right into that callus, so I'm not feeling it as much. But if it gets right behind, like right there, it's getting right behind the callus, like under. A lot of people are like, oh, if you have calloused hands and there are no hot spots, that's nonsense. Actually, I, I can tell you in practice, my, my hands are, are, they are calloused up, right? But those... Uh, the bills on a pocket clip, if it gets under the callus, it actually hurts worse than not having a callus there at all. Um, so people who say that, that's nonsense. Um, just, you know, if the, wearing gloves will solve that problem. But if you have to work with your bare hands, uh, either way, that pocket clip is going to um, dig into your hand a little bit. It's not the worst thing in the world, um, but it is going to dig in a little bit. This does have an over-travel stop. Look at that. The over-travel stop screw is also T8. Um, 
It does have an over travel stop that doubles, or I'm sorry, a lock bar insert that doubles as the over travel stop, so that's nice. Um, centering on this guy is a tad bit off, but it's been used. I'm gonna guess that it was probably centered brand new. There is no blade play at all. Super solid uh, up, down, left, to right, so I'm happy with that. Um, the, uh, let me take a look here. There's the stop pin. So you can see that there's shouldering right there. No shouldering up top, but that's not that big of a deal. Um, I, I really like this design. It's just kind of a chunky worn cliff. I don't know if there's a whole lot of, you know, variants of this knife, but in practice, this knife is very utilitarian, right? My biggest qualms are the length and shape. I don't think that needs to be nearly that long. Also, the shape of the flipper tab, the pointiness on either side, and this unnecessary jimping, I think, um, that could all be knocked down. Um, other than that, though, it's really just the pocket clip. The pocket clip just kind of looks like, eh, pocket clip, and it's got that bill on it, and I don't really like that. But other than that, I really don't have a whole lot of things that I feel like I need to complain about. I mean, some people are going to complain that the handle length is unnecessarily long, to accommodate for people who want to get a full grip on a knife of this size. I don't know that I really see that as a flaw. Now that I've pointed it out, I'm sure people are going to be like, oh my, sorry about that, my phone buzz. I'm sure people are going to be like, oh my gosh, the handle is so much bigger than the blade. Um, I don't really think that it's that big of a deal. Um, but, you know, I, I just, I want to point it out so people understand. So what's the price in this guy? I am gonna be um, providing an Amazon affiliate link down in the description. I can find this thing for about 220. Um, I think that's about what you see. Now the problem is, is that this knife's made in China and ZT Zero Tolerance manufactures their knives in the United States and they're also offering S35VN and M390 on 6L4V titanium on bearings for between 220 and 250. Some places you're gonna find this knife as much as $250. So it's like, yeah, why is it a little bit higher? At 180 bucks, it'd have blown me away. At 200 bucks, I'd have been like, that feels about spot on. At 225, I can see it, but it's a little bit high. That's what I think. Um, this is still a knife that I think is uh, recommendable for people looking for exactly this, but it's not really recommendable to everybody because there are things out there that are doing this. There, there are knives out there that are doing exactly the same thing for less money, right? This is a good design. It's not a perfect design. Um, it's a, it's an okay price. It's not a good price, right? I'm not gonna say it's a bad price. It's just an okay price. Um, it's cool. I like it, but I can recognize that it's not going to be for every single person in terms of function. Yeah. It's definitely going to work just fine for people who are wearing, you know, regular khakis, regular jeans, cargo shorts, work pants, whatever. And they're looking for kind of a bulky, more chunky titanium knife with a good hardworking blade shape, good materials, quick deployment, yada, yada. Uh, not everybody's hands are going to be happy with it, but you know, it's okay. So that's my conclusion on this. Anyways, guys, that's going to be pretty much it for today's upload. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do not like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go and click on this Metal Complex logo right here and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.